Well hi folks, 1st of July and summer is, is certainly upon us. 6 o'clock at night and it's about 30 degrees in the greenhouse. It's absolutely sweltering, the humidity is absolutely ridiculous. But it's certainly making things grow, so I'll just uh, give you a quick look and show you what's going on. Right, you know like I said I was the world's worst cucumber grower. I'll check them out, ready to come off now. Nearly a foot long. They are suffering in this heat though, they're wilting during the daytime. But they do come back to life at night when it cools down, so... They do, they look a bit, uh, a bit drastic, but they seem fine. They, like I said, they come back to life. But I'm really happy, I've got loads of cubes on. Look, there's another, another two there. So they're doing really well. Peppers, getting some little peppers coming now. There you can see, growing slowly. Got a bit of a white fly outbreak, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, there's not a lot you can do about it, I suppose. Tomatoes, getting plenty of trusses of tomatoes on now. These are the gardener's delight. Big trusses, you get hundreds on sometimes. So happy with those, if you see they're growing, what are they now, maybe four or five feet tall. So doing okay. Another little mini cucumber. I mean, these are uber mini cucumbers. Look at the size of that, like a mouthful. It's just started to perk up. It looked a bit uh, stunted at the start, but it is. It's been a slow, slow burner this one. But uh, I'll just try and train that up a bit of string and just get loads and loads of these little bite-sized cucumbers. Chilies are loving the heat. They don't care. No matter how hot it is, they'll just uh, they love it. The hotter the better. They produce more flowers. So they're the little prairie fires. Like I say, really benefiting from the heat. The courgettes going bonkers still, producing loads of courgettes now. And I'm getting bored with them already, because they are a bit of a bland, tasteless thing. And I've just looked in the corner of this greenhouse and I've seen the world's most enormous fungi. I don't know what on earth that is, but I think I better chop it up, because if it's going to start producing spores everywhere, I don't want to be breathing them in, do I really? I've just spotted that now, that's enormous. Anyway, that's about it in the greenhouse, I think. I'm not hanging about too much, it's... It's way too hot in here, so I'll nip up, up, nip up to the plot and show you what's going on up there. Well hi folks, here we are up at the plot, and it's the strangest sensation ever this, it's blowing about a 15 mile an hour wind, and it's just absolutely boiling, it's like someone's got a hair dryer on you, it's crazy weather. But it's really fr nice and fresh, bit of breeze, I don't care. So anyway, as you can see from my last update, I had one solitary pea flower on, now the whole lot's in full bloom, so... Uh, should have a really good crop later on. That's one thing that does require a bit of water though, peas, to get a good crop. So I'm supposed to have a few downpours tomorrow, a few thunderstorms hopefully. So a good old drench won't do it any harm at all. Having some mixed results with the cabbage. If you can see, I'm getting absolutely annihilated by... I thought it was caterpillars at first, but I had a look around and there weren't any caterpillars. And then I just found out it must have been slugs. So I've set loads of beer traps. There, ones with the lids on, I bought some off the internet, they're only a pound each, so it won't uh, get di get uh, diluted by the rain. But these are the second lot of uh, Savoy cabbage, and they're alright, not not been touched this lot, this batch. They're actually starting to heart up, if you can see through this mesh, probably not. But they should be alright, even in this drought, this bit of a drought we're having, because I've got quite heavy clay soil and the roots will go down, down really deeply. So they'll find enough moisture. Right, shallots, finally perking up, look. They were really pathetic at the start, but uh, they're doing okay now. A bit, bit slower than last year, but another month and they should be right. They should have formed some nice bulbs. Found this thing there, I don't know whether you can make it out. A little hollow. Oyster, cast, oy oyster catcher, little sit or nest or something. Because I found some like webbed feet marks in it. So I was expecting to see a few eggs, but obviously it's not that keen. Right. Lettuces, absolutely flying on now. Again, a bit of slug damage on a few. And a little gems there. But these are the icebergs, so it's just some damage on the outside. But once you get through into the middle, the heart's not so bad, it's all right. And these are the multi-green lettuce. I've, I'd urge anyone to try these. These are fantastic. And if you look, they don't seem to have been affected by slugs whatsoever. They're really crispy. Absolutely fantastic variety, really quickly quick growing, don't seem to have any pests at all, stand up to the hot weather and by all accounts, by the looks of it, don't seem to get affected by the slugs. 
little gems, same thing with the hearts, just eat the hearts and they'll be absolutely perfect. My garlic, it's perked up now, it's absolutely got some big thick shafts if I show you some of these. So we're doing okay. I don't know whether I've, I've not noticed any uh, any rust yet. Sometimes it does go a bit blotchy before you get the rust and then, it, and then the spores appear but so far so good, no rust. I did get it really late on last year but by then the, the bulbs had formed so it was no big deal. Potatoes, they really could do with a, a good drink of water and I'm absolutely running out of water up here. And because these are in the pots I'm absolutely stuffed really so like I say if I just get a good old downpour, fill my water butts up and I'll give these potatoes a good old drink. But I've got plenty, I've, I've been watering them a little bit with what I've got and, I, and the roots do go through the bottom of the pots into the soil so uh, it's just really to stop the, the potatoes forming in dry, bone dry soil which can, uh, which can make them more sort of scabby really, it's, the, it's, that's the, it's that that's the main, main issue. Right, we'll just have a look in the polytunnel, I bet it's absolutely boiling in here. Let's open it up, it's a nice breeze blowing now though so that should keep it a bit cooler. Right, what have we got? Watering night tonight, which I was dreading. But we'll just have a quick look first. My cucumber success is continuing this year, look, not killed one yet, which is a miracle for me. So um, I'm pretty pretty happy really. Another courgette plant, why I've grown two I do not know because if you look at this, there's loads coming on this now as well, all over it. Plenty of those. Right, these are the potatoes that remember some of my first reveals out after 90 days I actually replanted the tops back into the into the compost and I've just left them actually the tops have died down now so I'll get those out in a bit and just see if we did get any little more any more little new potatoes that did grow a bit bigger just to, just as a bit of an experiment right I'm getting a bit out of breath because it's hot in here French beans going nuts oh indigestion sorry going nuts now training starting to train them across and we're now starting to get plenty of flowers on which will soon be little beans so like I said anything with like peas and beans you need to give them plenty of water to make the beans set so this is just where I'm going to use what little water I've got inside the polytunnel big onion I'm really happy it's still not had any problems and it's just reached 20 inches now I'll put that there for scale again so get that stick out of the way there you go, I think it's stopped growing leaves which is a bit of a shame and when they do stop growing leaves sometimes they can send two out which means it's going to split into two or send a, a flower spike out but uh, I've not noticed one yet and that's the size of it so so far so good if it can keep growing for another six weeks I will be happy and I think I'll get my personal best right I'll keep going oh it's so hot in here carrots you've seen all these before these are the big show ones in the in the barrels long ones doing really well but what's underneath we don't know until the day before the show when we pull them all up giant tomatoes not getting that many fruit set actually but the plants are enormous I'll get to this side plants are huge big flowers on look but uh, I just need to keep tapping them I think try and get some pollen to set on the flowers that's the best way to do it but uh, yeah, if we do get some set, they should be all right. There was one down here somewhere that there. We can just if I can get in. I've got one set a bit ago there. That might be the only one. It might grow really big, but we'll see. A few more disasters with the show onions, which I'm not too bothered about this year. I started getting a bit of botrytis around the base on some, which is a fungal thing, which is just down to it being really cold and moist the last few weeks before we got this heat wave. And it's just ideal breeding conditions for botrytis and once it gets in there's no point they won't keep they won't grow anymore they'll just go rotten and make everything else even worse so i just pulled the pulled the ones up so if you see where there's a gap that's ones that i've pulled up and then just thrown them away because like i said they won't recover and they'll just keep getting more and more and more rotten anyway carrots giant carrots these are crazy now i don't know what's underneath i've just started heaping a bit of soil up if they start growing extra legs they should be huge but uh, again it's just a laugh oh god i have to go outside it's too hot in here right so that's about it in the polytunnel i think we'll just have a quick look outside and have a look at the marrows and stuff and then i'll harvest these spuds and see if we've got any yeah, 
just before I go into the marrow bit, one thing I've never had before is absolute decimation of potato leaves by slugs. Look at the state of that. Absolutely eaten to death. So I put the odd little slug pellet in, in the pot, and it was just a death, just absolute slug death. And I put a few down the bottom and look at all the snot and slime. It's been the world's worst year for slugs. Let's see what's in this slug trap. There's an odd one floating around in there, but I've never known slugs attack potatoes like that because it's supposed to be poisonous, the leaves, but look at it, just absolutely eaten to bits. Right then, folks, these are the giant maras. I've obviously taken them out from underneath this cloche protection because they'd have absolutely boiled in this weather. I've just got a, the cloche up behind them because it's going to be quite windy tomorrow just to give them a bit of uh, wind protection, but they're growing well. Starting to vine now, so hopefully, if they get to about 10 foot, I should set a Set a marrow and uh, get a few bigger, get an odd big one on. There you go, that's the other one. That's a bit more vigorous, that one. But they're loving the warm weather. That's it, that's the thing. They love hot weather, warm weather like this. Right, the kale is absolutely, it's all, well, it's ready to take. Now I could start taking some of these new leaves now. It's absolutely flown along with this warmth, so uh, it's really good, that. Red cabbages. Right, we'll go through all this again. Red cabbages, absolutely massive but not starting to heart up yet but doing okay, a few more savoys I planted loads this year because I thought they were really good last year and they kept without splitting until about December time last year so I wish I'd got, I wish I'd got more in the ground Leeks, my world's most pathetic leeks aren't doing so bad now actually They're perked up since I planted them growing bigger so I'm quite happy with those this is the sort of weather that really sends your onions to bolt, but not doing too badly. There's one, two, three, four, about six I can see there, which isn't too bad. And they should be starting to bulb up now. So I've been getting about another three weeks until they form a decent sized bulb. But they're just starting to bulb now, if you can see. So if we get a bit of warmth, a bit of rain, and they should form a decent bulb. If we can get away with only a few of them going to seed, then that'll be quite a bonus this year, actually. Shallots. Not far off being ready now, actually. They're nicely bulbed up and split into clumps, so uh, happy with those so far. Second lot of peas again, as usual. I'll just have a final look in the old uh, my exhibition carrots in this thing here. And my parsnips, let me get in. Just a quick look. And so far, so good. Got plenty of tops on. I'm only growing four, four in each barrel this year, so uh, we'll see how they get, see how they do. And these have perked up a bit now, the, the show carrots. If you notice, I did lose a few to slugs earlier on, but the ones that have survived uh, are doing okay. So that's about that in here. I'll just get these spuds out finally and see if we get a crop. Well, right then, folks, we'll chuck these spuds out now and see if we've got any. I haven't got a tripod or anything, so I'll basically I'll just, I'll just chuck them out and see if there's anything whatsoever. I'll get them both out. Hang on. Oh, this is going to be hard with one hand. Right. So, replanted potatoes. Will they yield any more? And the answer appears to be yes. Look at that. Well, that is surprising. Look at that. Whoa. Pretty chuffed with that so far. So, if I'd have just chucked these away, I'd have had. Well, none would have. It's not cost me anything, just replanted the old... Bloody hell, look at that. Sorry for the camera work, folks, but I'm trying to look through my lens and look at my hand. And they don't seem to align. Oh, that's a proper bonus, that. Anyway, that is cool. Right, I'll just get them out, I'll show you what we get to in the end. Because it's going to look stupid, this. Well, I've just riddled through all the soil. From the little remaining bits of potatoes, plants, and that's it. I reckon they must be, I've not got my scales or anything, they must be getting on three, three and a half pound there, which is fantastic considering it was just a, I'd only thrown the tops away and just composted them. I thought, oh, I'll just plant them back in some compost because they had some little baby potatoes on and see what happens. And that's the result. So I will be doing that again, if I remember, next year, because it's free potatoes. Right then, folks, that's about it, I think, for this, uh, this roundup. Things are going well. It's roasting, summer's here. And that's about it folks, so I will say, see you later.